Good afternoon, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm, Oxford, Ohio. It's a hot one today, mid 80s, low 80s, but man, is it humid. We've got a cattle move to do today. We've got uh, some thoughts on a recent study that came out. Before we do that though, good word for today is from Ecclesiastes 6, verse one. I have seen another evil under the sun and it weighs heavily on men. God gives a man wealth, possessions, and honor, so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. But God does not enable him to enjoy them, and a stranger enjoys them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. Come on, Am. Now, Am. By the way. Come on. Come on, Am. Push him my way, Sam. Yeah. Sheep and cattle drive. Good job, buddy. Oh, go on, you big galoot. Don't start. Go on. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Go on. Now. Head him off. I got it. Hey, big Mr. Big's leading the way today. Come on, sheep. Okay, August 5th here, back to paddock one. Uh, it has been 33 days since we started this uh, on this paddock number one. This is our gonna be our starting our fourth rotation. So we did a rotation starting May 1. Uh, did one in May, did one in June, did one in July, and August here is fourth. Uh, fourth time we've been on this ground and taking a look. It's not too, too bad. Um, 33 days, but that means 30 days of rest because we were on here about three days. And not, not definitely not as thick as when we first start out in the spring, but this has got some pretty good, pretty good stuff on it here. Um, running the sheep, the mamas and cattle together. I don't know that we will get three days out of this. Um, we will have to see, see how this goes here. I had the question and it was, uh, I thought it was a good one. Um, do we pay attention or, or how do we handle how much gets trampled, how much is eaten and how much we leave behind uh, in our rotational grazing setup? And uh, to be honest with you, I really don't, I really don't pay attention to what we're leaving behind. Um, I could, but my, my philosophy is I want to know what it looks like when we return. So I want growth. I want lush pasture when we come back. And if we don't have that, then yeah, either we need to not graze as long um pull them off sooner or uh you know we need to change things up but as long as i come back when we come back we see uh growth on here to sustain us uh for another two or three days that's really all i am concerned with i don't get much more technical than that be it right or wrong uh, so take that for what it's worth pretty good uh looks like a pretty good patch of red red clover here uh i've got some uh chicory chicory mixed in here um, sheep will like that everybody's uh, everybody's digging right in here uh, speaking of trampling uh, and what you're leaving behind not sure if you had a chance to see the study out of University of Nebraska uh, their sand hills meadows um, came out I uh, believe it was uh, I came across it this past week in the news and um, it was interesting, a uh, very interesting study. Um, what caught my eye is the duration, uh, eight year, eight year long study. 
and um, you know they're looking at uh, mob grazing specifically now some of the headlines that I came across and not the actual study but articles reporting on the study uh, was that mob grazing has been debunked mob grazing debunked <laughs> I thought I gotta I gotta look at this so you get into the actual study and you start to read they ran three different groups of animals um, the first group was a mob grazed group what is mob grazing uh, you're basically going to up way up your stocking density so lots of animals in a small space for a very short amount of time so that first group they did um, 60 days but they did um, twice a day moves so 120 moves in that 60 days the second group was four paddocks uh, 60 days uh, they're moving every 15 days 15 30 45 60 in that group and then the third group they were moving every 10 days in four paddocks but they came back and did a second a second rotation so two rotations that lasted about 80 days they looked at mob grazing and specifically the effects of trampling um, on uh, plant diversity, soil health, uh, root growth, animal performance, those types of things. The results of this study are supporting um, that the, the group that returned, um, so that went through twice, uh, actually had the highest uh, performance in many of those uh, parameters. You know, looking at a study like this, I, I think it's tempting to, to make some conclusions that, uh, in my opinion, are not there. A couple problems that I have with this. Uh, number one, one cycle. Uh, you, do, you do one cycle uh, through a rotation. You never come back. I mean, we start here in May. Um, and I typically will go through, you know, last year, I think we were into December. So we're getting six, seven, eight times that we're returning to the same piece of ground. You know, what is the impact of that? We won't know from this study. Um, now this study was specifically, if you read the, the, the focus was primarily on trampling. Does trampling provide, um, any kind of benefit? And they came up with a conclusion of no. Um, again, um, can you really measure that and can you really speak to mob grazing without a return to the same piece of ground in the, in the same season? I don't think so. That's my opinion though. The other interesting thing is they're only, they're only doing this study. Yeah, sure. It's eight years in a row, but they're only doing it each year from June through August. So it's like a 60, 60 days. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. You need to, to go back and read the entire study. But from what I could pick up on, it's only June through August each year. Um, you know, is that real life uh, on a ranch? Is that really the way we manage from June to August? That's it? And then we can draw our conclusions? Uh, I, I don't think so. What, what strikes me is you, you scroll down to the very bottom of the study and you see the acknowledgments uh, and they're thanking the undergrad uh, students and the grad students for their data collection help, right? So in my mind, you know, and I'm, I'm connecting some dots here, uh, but hey, let's uh, use the students in their summer off here. Oh, we can just do it to June through August, right? Well, you can, uh, and it makes it look pretty and dressed up when you say it was for eight years. But in my mind, this, this gives us no definitive uh, conclusions um, as far as rotational grazing, mob grazing, even trampling. I, I really don't, I really don't think, in my opinion, that you can draw these conclusions. Uh, you want to do a study? Uh, find a real working ranch, uh, a real working ranch, and do it year round for eight years. Returning to the same piece of ground, you know, have your three different um, groups and and do your study. Do your study that way. Uh, to me, that would be quite a bit more realistic than, um, you know, using students uh, for their summer break. Uh, so just my two cents. I, th I think it's good uh, that we're, we're getting interest. There's interest from uh, universities to dig into this and to uh, see, see what can be found. Um, but I think, uh, again, just to, to have a legitimate 
a legitimate study, you've got to get some real world uh, parameters. The other thing too is um, you've got no very little cool season grasses. Uh, if you're going to go from June to August, what about the cool season grasses, uh, spring and fall? You've got you've got other you've got other seasons in there that are not even being. Uh, accounted for, you know, what about the cumulative effect of returning uh, to the uh, same piece of ground? Uh, that's that's not being measured here or within the, the parameters. So what really irked me, though, uh, are the, the folks that are hanging on to uh, conventional management styles uh, and they're out to with, you know, with an ax to grind. Um, and so there I'm seeing, well, glad I don't waste my time. Uh, you know, with uh, extra moves, with mob grazing and whatnot. I, you, I, you can't say that. I mean, you, there's just no way. There's no way. Uh, sure, it was uh, an eight-year study, but uh, University of Nebraska, you guys need some, some real-world parameters in there. My opinion. Uh, just some other thoughts here on our rotation, on moving into the dry season, which is, is you know, uh, traditionally typically where we are not this year we've been getting rain every other day every day really it's like the rainforest which is unusual for this time of year uh, we hit august and we're typically very uh, a lot a lot drier than we have been uh, that being said though uh, days are getting shorter forage growth i can i can notice a definite difference uh, between now and and when we started in May, June, everything's slowing down. If you can remember, I have not mowed anything out here. And if you remember, we were intentional about that early on. I had stuff just shaggy everywhere, couldn't keep up with it, and uh, was pretty discouraged until I came across, uh, might have been, been a Greg Judy video, I don't remember, but he said, whoever it was, said that if you're keeping up right now uh, in May and June, then keep in mind, you hit August, September when we when we dry out, and you're not going to have enough. So I was encouraged by that. I let it shag, and uh, and here we are, and um, we're keeping pretty good. We're keeping pretty good stands. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I've been uh, fairly happy with this, but can definitely notice the slowdown. So I'm glad that we uh, managed as we did and did not get crazy uh, when things were out of control. Like oh, I gotta. You know, I, got, I think one of the biggest temptations is I gotta make this look good, right? I gotta make this look good. Well, uh, there is a place for mowing, sure. Uh, when your weeds, your pastures start getting weedy, yeah, you know, go out and hit it. Um, but a uh, few weeds here and there, I'm gonna let it go. That's uh, the way uh, we, we aired on that side here this year and uh, glad we did. I think we did pretty well on moisture. The rain has definitely helped though. I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Take care.